Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the weather forecast here by Adrian's Weather Forecast. As you guys can tell, it's going to be a very exciting video and a major update here on the extremely dangerous and very active weekend to come out here. This Easter weekend, especially Sunday, is going to be the a bullseye for the worst of severe weather also including tomorrow an enhanced risk but tomorrow we have up to uh sorry for su uh, sunday we have up to a level four moderate risk and there is a extremely high chance we can get to a updated to a level five tomorrow we have millions to see extremely large hail major tornado outbreak is very likely and damaging winds again once we will be seeing the tropical storm force winds and hurricane force winds that's going to possibly cause flash flooding as well and possibly a ton of power outages due to the wet soil so we have not only a severe weather threat a flash flooding threat and also a power outage threat so definitely something we are not wanting to see for easter but it's going to happen and it's going to get really really bad multiple bands that could have super cells and discrete cells that possibly bring in major tornadoes and i'm actually at i'm actually in, in a very high risk as well so hopefully i don't get a tornado but hopefully i can get some good coverage of this major severe weather again we'll be looking at detailed radars we're going to be looking at the severe weather outbreaks we're going to be looking at if you will be in the risk and what time this will be a rather long video possibly more than 20 minutes uh, cause we're going to be looking at very good details. And yeah, without further ado, look in the video. Please subscribe. We are one subscriber away from 2090. We lost one. So now we're back at 2000 in the 2080s. But please share subscribe, guys. It takes one second. I do daily weather forecasts. And again, be sure to share the channel to any friends or family that you think will need this video in order to prepare. Because we'll definitely need shelters in place. Without further ado, look in the video. So we're going to be looking at the... Uh, the uh, original old radars or not old but the original basic radars here uh and then after this we'll be looking at the detailed radars to see exactly what times and see how uh, organized these bands are and all that good stuff so again by later tomorrow this is when we see the severe weather beginning again it's going to be starting out here mainly in texas but later by tomorrow in the evening we'll start to move into the south central including louisiana arkansas mississippi and even alabama but tomorrow uh, sunday is the biggest threat but tomorrow is the second biggest threat so we'll have these bands developing the worst of it will actually be including northern texas dallas fort worth and gainesville and seeing some other outskirts with scattered tea storms across all the way of the ozarks down into the far southern texas by early easter morning it's not looking too bad uh not as bad it's going to look like in the evening but we're starting to see these bands develop and again look at these isobars looking at how incredibly close they're going to get a lot closer and here you have the defined low pressure system right here and as well we have a low pressure system right here and even right here so this is the main low pressure system that's going to uh bring in the isobars and going to bring in the winds again look at these how close they are that's indicating very strong winds coming down here so that's going to be causing not only a, a damage threat damaging winds but a power outage threat and flooding so also again as we get closer into the overday hours we're going to start seeing the severe weather getting worse because we have all the ingredients we have the moisture from the gulf of mexico we have that low pressure system just the north and we have again these uh very strong bands developing with the overday heating as it is going to get very warm in these areas by later into Sunday, it completely changes. Now it, it just doubles in size. Um, again, it's going to be a massive system. Again, you can see the worst of the band at early in the afternoon. We'll be, of course, staying in Arkansas, Oklahoma, now added to the big severe weather risk. Now with some very strong bands as well. Again, arriving to Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and including Georgia. Again, we had those scattered thunderstorms stretching all the way into the Carolinas early on. By later into early monday morning things get a lot worse again these bands are just doubling in size and they're going to be multiple they're going to be in rows we're going to have one band there one band there and one on top of each other that's going to be a really open window for tornadoes right here especially if you're in the slight to up to a moderate risk that's where we have a very big chance for tornadoes and again by as we get early into monday it's going to be a massive uh, troublemaker into areas in the Carolinas, Georgia, still including Tennessee, 
West Virginia, even Ohio, and then we'll have less of a severe weather threat into the mid-Atlantic, not necessarily looking too shabby in the mid-Atlantic and Northeast, but definitely something major we need to focus on, and it's looking very bad, even with just the general radar, which usually downgrades stuff. Now we're going to be looking at the detailed radars here. This is where stuff starts to get interesting. So by Saturday, the next 19 hours, so again, uh, really uh, mid-morning here, around 8 a.m., 9 a.m., uh, we'll start seeing these bands developing out here into western Texas. Uh, they're going to be very small, but gradually getting bigger and strengthening as we go on in the next 24 hours. So around 2 o'clock uh, central time, these bands will start to get a bit bigger. So we have one out here near Lubbock and another one moving towards Austin, Texas and uh, possibly bringing some uh, small but heavy bands out there into San Antonio. These bands will the next 30 hours here into really late Saturday. This is where we start to see these bands getting a lot bigger again. This is still Saturday, and we're going to be seeing very strong bands, uh, multiple bands though, but very heavy at some point near Dallas, Fort Worth, and also seeing that very heavy rain out entering the Wichita Falls area into Oklahoma. And then we have these very strong bands entering into Louisiana. Still by very late Saturday, we're still seeing these bands uh, out here into the South Central. Uh, definitely not as bad as what's going to be, uh, obviously, into uh, what we're going to be seeing on Sunday, obviously. And these bands, again, will now move eastward. And this is Sunday morning. Uh, so let's actually now get into the Southeast now that we've gone over that. So this is going to be still, this is still Easter, closer, more into the day. So as we get closer into the now, not only the next 43 hours, we have these other smaller uh, severe thunderstorms uh, moving ahead of time into across Alabama, Georgia. And then we have the main system out here in Arkansas and Mississippi with the uh, the worst of the bands there. That's where we'll have a lot of the energy. And as we now get later on, uh, these bands are going to get a lot worse now. Look at very strong bands developing now in Louisiana near Alexandria. That's where we have that moderate risk, soon to possibly be a high risk with these very strong bands. Shreveport, again, we're going to see these very strong bands ahead of time for Georgia and Tennessee as well. That would also increase the severe weather threat, uh, not only for almost now all of, t uh, all of Sunday, but also going to be increasing the flooding threat. And ha here we have these major bands now going to be going through uh, Tennessee, and then we have Birmingham, Tennessee, possibly one of the worst severe weather outbreaks of the year. Again, this is going to be a historic severe weather outbreak for sure. Uh, it's going to be like possibly 2012 or 2011, maybe in 2014, but we saw those major bands early in the spring. Again, very strong bands now for Shreveport out there into the lower Mississippi Valley, and things are not going to get any better. They're actually going to get a lot worse by Sunday night. Look at these bands. Uh, not only are they, they're not weakening as the day goes on, they're strengthening as we get closer into the night again. And then afternoon, we're going to be seeing these temperatures warming up up to 10 degrees compared to today. So definitely be seeing these uh, these uh, bands starting to get a lot more active. It's actually now, let's actually go back to uh, that radar here. Let's actually now check out the Tennessee area, Kentucky and Tennessee, because this is where we'll be seeing possibly one of the worst bands to come. I would not doubt these areas get added to a moderate risk like Tennessee again, very strong bands near Memphis now moving to northwestern Mississippi and then the next 60 hours this is going to be a major uh, out here a U-shaped uh, band which is called a wall cloud this is a open window for seeing major bands and tornado makers for uh, Nashville looks like you guys are going to be seeing very bad tornadoes uh, and severe weather Clarksville out there now not far from Tupelo and we're still not even done. It goes in the next 60 hours. So by later tonight, we'll possibly see what's the worst to come, especially also by sun, uh, my Monday morning. Again, yeah, seeing these advanced uh, thunderstorms all over the place, but this looks like the major maker right here. This is major tornadoes and etc. So possibly seeing Gulf, uh, Gulf size hail, and that's a very, very good chance of happening. Now we're going to be looking at the GFS now here in the uh, NAM 3 km model in the GFS. The next 21 hours again, we have these very strong bands out here developing near Lubbock and also uh, not far from San Antonio and, se and southern Texas. By the next 26 hours again, we see these bands developing gradually 
uh, increasing in size, but that's when we see this really big band now. Also, looking a lot worse for possibly including Houston uh, and Texas City, and also very strong bands. Actually, a potential for Texas advancing in their level, uh, maybe up to an enhanced risk, I would not doubt, for tomorrow with these very strong bands. And that's going to get, they're going to connect, and that's going to be bringing more severe weather now for Louisiana that will be moving eastward. Uh, again, definitely going to be seeing severe weather across the whole region here. This is as we now get into uh, now Easter morning. And then we have more bands developing uh, not far from the college station. Again, seeing these very strong bands advancing all the way up to northern Georgia before the main system even arrives, which is going to be right here. And look at this major, major band. This is just something you see in... Oklahoma or in Kansas in like June or May. Like, this is some major stuff. Again, I'm going to be seeing very strong, severe weather in Sunday morning. Uh, very strong, severe weather as well with a very strong winds. And then by Sunday evening, it's going to be possibly like the worst bands. I'll probably see this whole year again, this whole year so far again. Here we still have these strong bands advancing up to Springfield and Nashville ahead of time. That's going to bring in possibly one of the worst of your weathers for almost a whole day. Definitely some action out there in Jackson, Mississippi. Potential for seeing major tornadoes as well for Alexandria. And look at this. Extremely strong bands now developing in southern Arkansas. Potential for major tornadoes there as well. And look, the severe weather is now entering all the way to the uh, Ohio Valley. Even seeing the severe weather all the way up into the Carolinas. And lighter thunderstorms all the way up into Winston-Salem. And look at this now. We even have very strong bands behind the major one. This is going to bring in just a whole time period of more severe weather. Now going to be entering Arkansas. You guys thought you were done. You have more. Now entering northern uh, Oklahoma or Tulsa and uh, possibly near Joplin. But look at this major. This is just shouting tornadoes and hail and damaging winds at 988 millibars. And now it, just look at this. this. You can just see how it, it's so structured and it's a major major band something we don't see so bad like this like this is some really strong bands and then we have more even behind it in arkansas still so and look we have more bands even in front of this so it's it's something that it's going to be very interesting and again potentially historic and it, it's going to be quite uh, quite a long day again. We're gonna be seeing multiple tornado reports for sure. We're gonna be seeing hundreds, maybe even a thousand wind reports by Sunday as these winds do increase with those millibars getting closer to each other. The low pressure system does strengthen as well. So this is what we're seeing tomorrow. So again, all the way up to level three uh, actually has extended, and Dallas has now been added to a slight chance. I would not doubt. I actually believe Dallas should be added to an enhanced risk. Because they're going to be seeing some very powerful bands. Uh, but I don't think the enhanced ratio stretch all the way up into uh, ten, uh, the Dallas area. I think it should, it should be a, just another little circle in enhanced risk instead of uh, extending the, this original one. So the marginal, we have 6 million people. So uh, it's really maintaining in the South Central. Not really any other area in the United States seeing some other severe weather threat. So Wichita, Corpus Christi, Loretto, Topeka. In other areas out there, all the way up to Alexandria, Louisiana, we'll be seeing again a marginal risk. So that's what we'll be seeing the at the really end of tomorrow, really late tomorrow. That's when we see these outskirts and these uh, beginning front waves of thunderstorms entering again Arkansas, Louisiana, and all the way to Kansas. But almost all day tomorrow, we'll be seeing the worst of it again in Texas, far western Louisiana near Shreveport, and far southern. Oklahoma. That's where we've seen the main of these bands. But again, in the marginal, that's what we see in the, by the end of the, the day. That's when we start to see these bands arriving. That's when we only have a marginal. For the slight chance, we have 16 million people. That's including Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, and Plano. And then, of course, enhanced risk. That's where we have the biggest threat for severe weather tomorrow, including hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. Again, if you're in there, you're going to ha definitely have to watch out tomorrow with multiple tornado reports uh yesterday we only saw one in louisiana but looks like this might be a bit worse than what we were expecting yesterday and enhanced risk is up to affecting around five and a half million people including san antonio austin waco kylene and round rock tornado threat is actually quite high i know it's only five percent chance that's very very low and 
just co using common sense. But when it comes to tornado, uh, a, a chance for a tornado, a 5% chance is quite high. So I say maybe a 40 to 50% chance. So that's what it's other words saying. So we've seen multiple tornadoes in areas that don't even have a chance, that aren't even under 2% chance. So 5% chance is quite an open window for tornadoes. This doesn't mean you're 100% going to see them. It's just you need to watch out because there's a big potential for seeing some. So we have San Antonio, Austin, Waco, Kylie, and Round Rock. So around 5.5 million people under there. Wind threats, actually a lot lower than I thought. I thought I should be at least a 30% chance because, again, we're seeing these very strong winds, at least tropical storm force winds in these areas. And but again, uh, it's a, a, only a 15% chance there, and then hail threat is actually a 30% chance. That's including five and a half million people, including San Antonio and Austin. Now we'll be looking at two, uh, Sundays, and just uh, you're probably wondering a moderate risk. I thought it'd be a lot worse. Actually, on day three for Storm Prediction Center, they can only uh, the maximum they can actually forecast is a moderate. Uh, when it comes to day three. So by tomorrow, we'll possibly see a high risk and it's moderate and enhanced risk moving a lot more to the east. Again, I'm actually in this enhanced risk. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too far from the border with a slight chance, but I'm pretty good in the enhanced risk. And I would not doubt if this enhanced risk does move more into Kentucky and the Carolinas. And this moderate risk does move in maybe southern Tennessee, if not northern Tennessee, and possibly western Georgia throughout all of uh, central and northern Alabama. So again, really this is the highest it can go. So it's actually really bad that they had to go to the highest they can possibly forecast on day three. But by tomorrow, we're definitely going to be seeing a high risk. If not, that's just going to be stupid. Like we need a high risk. Like this is something da like very dangerous severe weather. This is possibly, again, historic. So the marginal risk is a lot, actually a lot bigger. As again, we see these multiple severe weather bands. The one from to, that the ones from tomorrow. Those will be in Ohio Valley by to uh, by Sunday, and then of course we have those other ones, just uh, uh, forming. Of course, in the South Central. That's where we have the biggest risk. Of course, that's for Dallas, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Columbus, Austin. Again, we still have a good chance for seeing some severe weather. Just not a huge chance for tornadoes, hail, and damaging winds. Of course, damaging winds going to be a threat for all of y'all, uh, but. Uh, again, just not going to see the biggest threat for tornadoes and hail, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Slide chance is including 30 million people. That's including major cities like Houston, Charlotte, Raleigh, Louisville, and Lexington, Kentucky. I guess we also have Evansville, uh, Poplar Bluff, and out there into the Big Bend area. And then the enhanced risk. This is where we start to see things getting very interesting, possibly seeing L getting very close to the worst of the bands, very close to the worst of the winds and tornadoes. Of course, I'm in the enhanced risk. That's the level three out of five. That's where we have 22 million people, including very big cities. And I mean very big cities like Atlanta, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Nashville, and Memphis. So very big cities. We also, of course, we also again have Montgomery as well. Also have Panama City, Gulfport, Hattiesburg. Uh, this is just an open window for very big band uh, bands to develop. I believe we even have Little Rock. Uh, I believe we have Little Rock in the enhanced risk as well, if not on the border. But we have a very big cities on this enhanced risk, which is not good. Again, that's what we'll be seeing possibly hail, very widespread tornadoes, and of course the damaging winds. This can be widespread throughout all of the eastern United States, no matter what. And then the moderate risk is what we have the worst to be so far tomorrow, of course, or sorry, Sunday. And we have actually 5 million people. That's actually a lot for a level 4 out of 5. Of course, we have to have a level 5 by tomorrow as it does update. So very likely this, all this to change. But again, so far for the worst, we have Birmingham, Jackson, Tuscaloosa, Hoover, and Monroe. So again, other big cities again. We're going to be seeing uh, really really strong bands again uh, so, uh outbreak of severe weather appears likely into Sunday night with greatest threat expected from Louisiana and then again we're seeing just very strong bands and very strong winds again possibly seeing long track supercells may evolve and again that they may evolve very early on in the morning where we had these bands again and Sunday morning in Louisiana and Mississippi and then move in northern as with the overday hating these, these supercells are going to get all the energy they need. And that's going to be creating 
very big tornado. So we're going to be focusing on the wind as well since I've been talking about it all today. Uh, but again, we're going to be seeing these very strong winds uh, coming from the north. Uh, so again, we're going to be seeing a lot of areas in the United States in general seeing very strong winds. Uh, but we're going to be seeing very strong winds as well in the exact same areas. We'll be seeing possibly close to the worst of the severe weather. Uh, again, out there near, uh, let's actually just focus on the southeast itself so we don't look at, uh, get distracted from other regions here. But, uh, so, again, we're going to be seeing very strong winds. Uh, as we go all the way up out here into the southeast, we're going to be seeing a maximum of four, uh, 54 knots, which is crazy alone. This is starting Sunday morning. So that's going to be out here in Louisiana. Again, This is, these states, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, sorry, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia, these states will possibly see, uh, for sure, Mississippi, Louisiana, and all these, but Georgia could also possibly see close to the worst and maybe even southern Arkansas. So all these areas will be seeing a very big threat for the worst of severe weather, and look how they are all in the very high risk for winds. We're going to be seeing close to 50 knots in southern Mississippi. Again, this is going to be wet soil as well. And it's going to increase now up to 82 knots. God, this is hurricane force winds and knots. And miles per hour is a very strong tropical storm. Again, these winds will move very fast. So that's the only good thing that's not just staying there and uh, just really just uh, staying there for a long period of time. Not stalling or anything. But we're going to be seeing up to 50, 55 knots for uh, Hans Bull and higher elevation than close to Birmingham, 60 plus knots, and to far and the far higher elevation than the Great Smoky Mountains. That's where we're seeing those Category One force winds again. Also into areas like uh, Nashville, 60 knots, which is crazy. Again, this can be really late in the night. Look at this; we get even worse. 98 knots is possible in the higher elevations. I'll be seeing close to 50 knots. Areas all the way to Columbus here, 60 knots, all the way up into near. The Virginia, uh, Western Virginia, 60 knots. And then we'll start to see these winds move uh, out into the Atlantic. We'll still see very windy conditions. So seeing up to 20 knots in the areas, but definitely a huge cool down uh, wind-wise. So again, as you can tell, we're going to be seeing very strong winds and hurricane force winds as well. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Oh, also to notice that these winds might be stronger than what Hurricane Irma brought in some of these areas. Uh, in these, some of these areas, we might be seeing way stronger winds, maybe double as strong as what Tropical Storm Irma brought in these areas. It only brought, I believe, only 45 knots from my area, if not 50 knots. Uh, and it already brought multiple trees down. This is going to bring up to 60 knots from my area. So again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everybody stay safe. I have multiple more updates coming out tomorrow.